Yep. All now, right. Yep. So, today, uh, show, Bev, uh, what do you think about the title? The title itself is enough to uh, gain your interest. <laughs> yes, it you know? is. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And uh, I'm glad I did it with you the way I did. In other words, we did open up the door to the birth certificate, and then we uh, uh, can get into the straw man and the Social Security number all, all at the same time. Okay, so, okay. Uh, we can get started right away. Now, all right. I'm trying to, yep, I got uh, uh, one thing to do here, and we're ready to roll. All right. Yep, there we go. All right. So now, let's get started on this thing. It's, uh, whew, this is a humdinger, uh, 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 Bev, this is a humdinger, and it's difficult to where to start because I covered the base on the birth certificate. Now, the birth certificate itself, it creates the straw man. Everyone listening to me has two birth certificates. Yeah, and I found that out personally. Yeah. Yes, there are two birth certificates. There's one with the county that comes from the health department. That's what Herman Kiefer was about here in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And then there was, there's another one from the state department, and it's called the Vital the Department of Vital Statistics. Now, if you don't, if you can't understand that, you might as well, uh, you, you know, you might as well give up right now because. It's not complicated to me, but I, I know. I know what's going on, but a lot of people, they seem to get very uh, confused with it. Well, what they do is, from, uh, from my experience, they seem to don't want to give you <clears throat> the one from the state. They keep now, I got the county birth certificate. I sent off for the state birth certificate, <laughs> but they sent me. One from the, they keep sending me Count. the county birth certificate. Correct, correct. Well, I sent you, I told you where to call, and I'm sure he put you on the right track because he, mm -hmm. he, 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 re he received his. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just go with that. But now, I just want people me, to know that they're not, they not going to be in a hurry to send you the original one. They keep no. wanting to send you that, that county one. Yes. Now, why do you think that is, Beth? And we we can talk about that. And I'll tell you. I I, I don't know. I didn't have time today to tell you when you or the other day when mm -hmm. you called. But let let me tell you why that is. Okay. We we are slaves. Now I know. I don't give a damn. We're slaves. You, mm -hmm. me, everybody that's listening are slaves. Are subjects to the corporation known as United States of America. And it was done officially, officially now, with Martin Luther King signing the so-called Civil Rights Act of uh, eight, uh, 1960, whatever it was, three or four, whatever that was. Mm -hmm. And he signed all of the Negroes were a part of it. And he signed it to represent us. He signed the Civil Rights Act. Now, a lot of people say, no big deal. That ain't got nothing to do with me. You're an idiot to say that. You are a stone idiot, and I'm not going to argue with you about it, but I'm going to tell you that was the most devastating uh, uh, document that could ever happen to you because it made you an official 14th Amendment citizen. Now, you may say you don't care. That's good with me also. However, if you don't know how to get yourself out of that contract, you're going to be a slave forever. Now, is there any questions with you, Bev, on that? And I'm, yeah. I'm going to – all right, go ahead. I'm listening. Okay, now, did Martin Luther King know what he was doing? Now, that's a question that had to be answered or should have been asked by Martin Luther King. Let's go with the benefit of doubt and say no, because they didn't kill him. He was always a good boy all the way up to the end. 
Now, the reason he was a bad boy at the end, because he began to wake up and realize that they were using him. Mm. See, you don't you don't wake up overnight. Now, don't get me wrong. We got a lot of dirty moors. We got a lot of crooked uh, Negroes out there that know they're doing wrong, but they want to get paid and uh, want to get a good position. But I'm just going to say for Martin Luther King's sake that he was not aware when he started his plight. Because believe it or not, Bev, on that uh, Bounce channel on yeah. uh, with Comcast, yeah, I saw a, I saw a special on Martin Luther King and his family, and when he was a young pup, his daddy sent him to a seminary school, of a theology school, and he fell in love with a white girl, and which is no big deal, but he was he wanted to marry her, and the daddy had to set him straight. You can't do that. And he finally convinced him. Now, this was all in documentation. I'm looking at it on this on this program. And his father said, well, if you do marry her, you know you can't bring her back to Montgomery. So you might as well tell your mama and myself goodbye because this stuff is over with. And so he apparently gave it up, but he married a, a mulatto named Coretta. And at that time, she was known as a mulatto, and he married her and brought her home, or they lived there together, or whatever the case may be. Now, this is all in hindsight, I'm telling you this, because if you didn't live in the 50s and 60s, you don't understand any of that. So there's no blame to be put on anybody, because black folks was crazy as a looney tune in the, in the late 40s, all 50s, and the 60s. I mean, across the board. We were buying lotion to make us lighter complected. We were doing putting conch and conchaline in our hair so to blow in the wind like, like Elvis Presley, one of them faggots or something. <laughs> the whole black race was crazy. So let's not start talking about this, this, and this. Okay. I tell you, I had a little, I had a little conchaline myself, so I know what was <laughs> <laughs> back in there. So I, I, I was just out to lunch like everybody else. So let's get let's let's get with the real. But now that we are waking up one at a time, the system is realizing it, and the system owns us. And the states are being told to hold back. They can't stop it, but hold right. back on the state on the state birth certificates because we do not want our slaves to run away. Right. That's why it's it's a process, and they have Negroes in positions that will hold back, but they don't know what they're doing. Mm. They don't even have it set up for themselves, so you know they ain't gonna set it up for you. Now, now my first. Now, before Martin Luther King put up, made us a citizen. Now, the rest of the people. They were already citizens. He just made the people of color citizens, right? Slaves. Correct, correct, okay. correct. Now, let's talk about that so we'll understand that. Okay. In 19... Let's, I'm going to give you a, fig, a number. 1945, and I have no idea what the population of black folks were in 1945, but I guarantee you 95% of them were not... United States of America citizens. Most of them came from the South due to the industrial uh, uh, industries that all started out. They come out of those rural areas. They ain't care nothing about no white people. They didn't care nothing about no Social Security card. They sure enough didn't pay no damn uh, income tax. And they surely didn't have an old folk pension check coming with the FICA. So what did the government do? They set up traps. Because everything has to be done by voluntary. You can't make a person a slave. It's against the Human Rights Act of 1945 or somewhere back there. You cannot make a person a slave. It's against international law to hold a person in slavery. So they came up with the slick idea that they would set up a straw man and put the straw man in slavery. And once you thought you were the straw man, they had you. Now, we're going to talk about that, but I wanted to throw that out there. Did you under, did you hear me? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. So 
one of the major factors they did, and I'm going to give you two big ones, and you can make up the rest of them. Number one, for all the black males, they refused to give them a decent job. If you wasn't a red app porter at the train station, if you were not a janitor, if you didn't shine shoes, you didn't get a job up north, in, and especially if you were black. Now, we're not talking about mulattoes because most of them were, trying to, were passing for white. So they were elevator operators. And for anybody out there over 60, you should remember Hudson's downtown when they had all those female mulattoes were elevator operators. And they told you, don't get your black ass on this thing because I'm going to take these white people up first. And you back up and let them whiteys on. I saw it. And I got on. I got on. I don't care about them pecs. 1958, when I got up here in Detroit, I was a, not a rebel. I was an idiot. I, I challenged all of that. They would not let that elevator go up until all them white people uh, got, got on there to go up. Now, I don't know if you if you remember that, Beverly, but I staked my life that that happened, and I saw it with my own eyes. Now, you want me to give away my age, huh? No, that's what I say. You, you, you don't don't say nothing. I got I got another one. I got another one for you. Downtown by Cuttingham's and Kinsels. I can't think of the streets, but I know one of them is Michigan Avenue, and the other one is Griswold. I think they had a big bus terminal down there, and Michigan. I mean, uh, Grand River was one of the spokes. Detroit is laid out like a big wheel, and they got these major streets that go at the, through it. As, as if they were spokes, Grand uh-huh. Michigan, Grand River, and stuff like that, okay? These buses ran those main lines. Then they had the crosstown bus that took it from one end of the city to the other and crossed all of the lines. I just want to tell you this story. They had buses lined up for Grand River, because most blackies stayed in that Grand River area. There were, you know, the sign on the bus, they had Grand River, Grand Boulevard, Grand Boulevard, uh, Joy Road, Schaefer, Six Mile, Five Mile, all of that Finkel, that type of thing. When you went downtown to shop at Hudson's and had all that stuff, you were not allowed to ride only the bus that said Grand River uh, 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 Oakman. Oakman was, was the furthest you were supposed to go out, so you didn't get on the other buses. Now, they had four buses that came out of there, Oakland, Joy Road. I'm looking at it, trying to throw it at you fast. I can't do it too quick. Uh, uh, Oakman, uh, 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 Livernois, there you go, Oakman, Livernois, Joy Road, and then there was one more. So when all those buses were full, they were still running Grand River buses, but they wouldn't stop until they got to five miles, six miles, seven miles, and eight miles, and you could not get on that bus. Mm. This was in 1960. Mm, wow. now, put that yes, yes. So all of y'all out there thinking y'all into something, I'm telling you, you're too young to know anything, and you're a damn fool if you don't try to study and find out what they did to all of us, to your mama, your papa, your uncles, and all of that. Now we back to we back to the straw man. They do not want you to be free because every baby that's born. Once they create the birth certificate from the county level, the health department, the baby, is, or better yet, they create a straw man and give it to the state. The state makes the money off of the straw man. Because you are known as ward of the state, W-A-R-D. Look it up. Don't, don't look at me like I'm crazy. Look it up. You're known as a ward of the state. Now, here we go with the straw man. You really don't know where. You could almost start anywhere. But I'm going to tap back to and only uh, one minute. I'm going to tap on London 1966 when they created that SESQ account. We done went through it. I'm not going to go through it again. But they created the SESQ account so that they could create a the straw man was born out of the SESQ account because that account had the straw man's name on it. That transaction was the first. Now, oh, yeah. tell us again the Set Secure account. What is what account is that? Tell us just right, briefly, right quick. What what did what was that? Is that where they did? They say you did. 
Yes, yes, that's when they said that they were going to take all of your property and take it away from you, and you could not receive it back until you rose from the dead. Now, the dead was this transaction that went on in the delivery room when your mama signed you as a ward of the state. The applications, which which she registered you as a slave, and they accepted it and rewarded your mother with a certificate of birth known as birth certificate. You, there's no law that says you have to have a birth certificate, but since you don't know, and since they make it so difficult for you, you say I got you got to have it because you got to go to school and all that old crazy stuff. But you do not have to have a birth certificate. That's something that they set up in order to create the straw man. Now, when you look at your county birth certificate the one that comes from the health department. There are two dates on that birth certificate. One date is the is the date of birth, and the second date is the date of filing. They use the date of filing because that's when the straw man was created, the date of filing. And it's right there on your birth. you got one close to you. Yeah, I'm looking at mine. Yeah. There should be two dates. One, the date of your birth, and the other one might be three or four days later, which is called the date when they filed it in the county or filed it in the state. Do you now, see that? Like mine, uh, my, my birth date is September the 3rd. My filing date is September the 20th. All right. Stop right there. You just agreed with what I just said. Correct. Your straw man was, you were born uh, 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 the first, the third. and the straw man was the third. Yeah, I'll try to remember that. And 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 the uh, straw man was born on the 20th. Yeah. And that's the only purpose of that birth certificate from the county. That's it. Now, when you get your your state birth certificate from Vital Statistics, there's not there's not two dates on there. There should be one date of birth, and it should be all printed by hand, upper and lower caps. Now, some people going to call and tell me mine is an all cap. It should be. Hear me clear. Everybody's not perfect. I don't know what went on and where you got you were born. I don't know. But I'm telling you what it should be. When you get it back from the state, you sh- it should be in long form. It should be on paper like a dollar bill. They, they got a name for it, water-colored uh, uh, paper, mm-hmm, something like mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. It should be in long form, and everything is printed in by hand. And that's the birth certificate. <clears throat> now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're confusing me because I'm looking at mine now. The, the, the county one is printed. The one that's... I sent to the state, but they didn't send. They sent me. Uh, it wasn't the right one. It's it's typed, but it's in upper and lower letters. Is any of them hand printed? The one from the Is county. It, the one from the county. Was hand, all right. I can't explain that. Okay. So when 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 you get the one from the state that you're trying to get, we'll talk again. We'll okay. look at them and talk okay. again. Okay. Okay. Because I, I I really don't know. And I think you told me the one that you thought was from the state had the vital statistics at the top. Is that right? Let me see. Let me see. No, it don't. Okay. All right. You got to get the one from the vital statistics. There's no law that stops them from giving it to you, but they will stall because everybody's beginning to wake up to this process. Yeah. And I'm and I'm going to tell you right now, when you get to the end of the total process, you, you're going to be rich as cream. Number one. Number two, you're going to have a head on you to know what you're doing. There ain't going to be no shenanigans because you ain't going to get no information from me unless you know what you're doing. And number four, you will realize why people are super rich. Well, I mean super rich. 
that because when you start working your trust, when you learn how to do it, you're going to get paid by the IRS. That's yeah. why people say the IRS is your best friend. Mm-hmm. Y'all need to do some research and find out what I'm talking about. Don't start calling me because I'm going to start hanging up. I ain't got time to waste talking to everybody about it. All I want to talk about is your birth certificate on the phone. Now, today we're going to talk about the straw man. We can deal. Y'all can call well, in on that. Well, Ryan, b- before yeah. you move forward, uh, I'm looking at my birth certificate, and this is the county. I haven't even got to the state one yet. Now, on, All right. uh, and, and where it says <laughs> the city or village that you were born in, it says yes. on there if outside the corporate the corporate uh, corporate limits. So they telling you on your birth certificate that they the corporation. Oh yes, yes. And now that you're becoming aware of it, you're going to see that kind of language on a lot of other documents. They t- mm. they t- they have to tell you what they're doing to you, but they are masters of. Legalese, that's another language that they use. They call it legalese. Okay. And we're going to try to get into that. We're going to get into that a little bit today also. All right. Now, let's get back. We're talking about, the, uh, real quick, we was ended up on this Cisco account. It's only a trust that's worth from birth to 18. They say it's estimated at at least 94 million uh, credits. I want to make it clear. Ain't no dollars because ain't no money. So it's between 94 and 105 million credits attributed to your straw man. But the only way the straw man can exist is you out of ignorance or better yet out of law because of the first 18 years. You had to pay the debt for the straw man. Now we'll, let's get into that. I'm moving. Away, I'm moving away from the Cisco account. Now, I want to look at United States is a private, for-profit federal corporation, and from 1933 they filed bankruptcy, so it is bankrupt and has to pay our bills. Because when they set up the uh, New Deal, and we're going to get into that right now, this New Deal, man, oh, man, oh, man. When we when they got into the New Deal, they said, number one, now, I got all this. If y'all want me to send it to you, you got to hit my emails, and I'll, I'll send you copies of it. United States is a corporation, a legal fiction that exists well before the Revolutionary War. I was looking for that piece. And there's a court case to prove it. So you ain't got to challenge me. They got a court case that proves it. Now, that meant that the United States was founded before the Declaration of Independence. Nobody knows that. I told you last yeah. week that it was founded. You called yes, us, Brian. Yeah, you did. It was founded back in 1500. 1590s and 16, because all of the 13 colonies were founded in 1600. And then they say the 13 colonies were the first United States. And it says it right here, and there's a case law that, that proves it. Now, United States Code, Title 28, Part 5, Chapter 172, Subsection A, I mean, uh, subchapter A, subsection 3002. It means that the United States is a federal corporation. 1933, March the 9th, a bank emergency was declared by Roosevelt because the insolvency or the bankruptcy of the United States. He signed executive orders. He got the orders right here. Then they got the Senate report that backed up his orders. Okay. I'm going through it fast because I got a lot of info to do. 1933, March the 9th, new money, paper promissory notes. And that's all we've been dealing with. You think that dollar bill or the 10 or the 20 or the 50, y'all think it's money. I know you're going to laugh at me. 
but it's only a note. It's a pay. It's a note to let the government know that they are in, in debt. That's how they keep track of the debt. As you spend the dollars, they track the dollars, and they can give you probably within uh, a billion dollars. You call them up right now. Better yet, they got a, 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 a clock on the Internet that tells you by the second the, the debt that the United States is in. It's over $17 trillion right now. And climate. Because all they're doing is spending paper money or spending monopoly money. Is that what they call it? Pollyann or monopoly? Monopoly. Is that what it is? When you go yeah. around $200 around, yep, monopoly. That's all it is, paper money. You believe it because you were born in it. Okay. In May of 1933, Gold was transferred. That's a word they use. Gold was stolen from the United States citizens to the United States by an executive order. Now people didn't know that they that 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 uh, Roosevelt represented United States of America Inc. because they didn't tell them that United States citizens were the ones that were under the original Constitution. And the ink was the 14th Amendment citizens. That's why I give you dates when I talk to you, because the uh, 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 14th Amendment was 1868. The government was found, this phony government was founded in 1871. They took the gold in 1933. And everybody went down and gave the gold up, just gave it up. And some people that had gold in their mouth, they made them take it out. Of their teeth, they made them slap that gold out. The richest black female on earth, the first black female on earth, was worth a good, I think, well, I don't know, big money. She went down and turned in all of her gold. Because they, you know, they were using gold then, and they were getting certificates from the bank. So they didn't have to carry the gold around in their pockets too heavy. She went down there and turned them certificates in, and they told her to come back in 20 days when we reopen a bank. We will give you promissory notes for your money. And when she went back, so the story goes, they said they didn't have a record of her turning in the money. And, and if y'all need her, that was Madam Walker. Wow. See, see? Yes, they took all her money. Okay, June, now listen to this, June the 5th, to to mitigate charges, there was a senator from Ohio <clears throat> named McFadden. He charged all of them with crooks and told them that they were going to hang for treason, for doing what they did. Now, y'all get a pencil and paper, you need to write this down, because it's going to save you, it can pay your bills, listen carefully. Congress, when they knew that they had uh, uh, c committed a crime, they hurriedly passed a re joint House resolution called 192. I'm looking right at it. It was to provide the United States citizen the right to set off all debt obligations as the consideration, and consideration is something bargained for, and exchange for the transfer of the gold and the property. So when they when when they took the gold from the people, McFadden filed charges against them because it was all crooked. So they hurried up and passed the law and said, "We're going to give y'all a, uh, a, a certificate." Is what I was telling you, the right to set off your bills. Now remember that bills in '93 were nothing like, or better yet, debt in '93 was nothing like debt today. Well, there wasn't no telephones, television, all that stuff, car notes, all that. They didn't. <laughs> Most of the debt in ninety and thirty-three was agriculture debt, like a horse, a plow, a tractor, if they had that tractor, that type of thing. Okay, so here's what you need to write down for the transfer of the gold and property. It is against public property. Uh, excuse me, public policy which only applies to Congress, but I, we'll get back to that. It's against public policy to pay a debt. So Chapter 48, 
48 uh, statute point one one two in the United States statutes at large is public law applies to everyone else. So write down chapter 48, comma, 48 statute, period, 112. Look it up. And it says that they will pay your bills. In 1950, Congress declared bankruptcy and the reorganization. Secretary of Treasury appointed a receiver for bankruptcy and reorganized the whole plan. So wait a minute, this was the second bankruptcy, not the, the 33 was the bankruptcy, and then you said 50-something was another bankruptcy? No, 50-something was when Congress declared the bankruptcy and they reorganized like they do in Detroit. They filed bankruptcy, and then they went through the reorganization bullcrap. Mm-hmm. And during the reorganization, the Secretary of Treasury, Treasurer appointed a receiver in the bankruptcy. It was all the same bankruptcy. Okay. okay? But now let me get my card out. Everybody needs to look up or go and get I got, oh, oh, I got some, oh, yeah, here it is, I think. I thought I saw, I got a card that I'm going to give you some numbers on it, and I need you to look them up. I got them real quick. But anyway, I won't stop the program. I'll get them, and uh, we'll go back. So anyway, you need to look up that chapter 48, 48 statute, one one. Two hundred hundred two. Now, in seventy seven, all of this thing goes all the way through how they kept changing and and making the laws refer back to what we what they did to us as citizens. Now, we again as black folks, we wasn't part of that trash because number one, we didn't have a lot of gold. We were more uh, 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 laborers than owners. That's number one. And number two, we didn't have any desire to be a part of the government and had no idea what they were doing. But they did because the bankruptcy came because the government did not have a way of making money. But they were borrowing money all over the earth from these so-called international banksters. And the banksters told them, we want our money. We want y'all to pay and they're still paying the banksters for World War One, World War Two, Revolutionary War, Civil War. All that money's still out there, and they're paying debt on it right now. They're paying interest on it right now. Okay. So when they're telling us they they in three trillion, all them trillion dollars of debt, that's what they're talking about. Yes. 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 And they and they do it. Uh, I wish I'm trying to think quickly. All right, I'll give you one. The uh, 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 what they call it when Obama went in office, Bush had already set up what they call that. Uh, what was that plan? That big money plan that Obama walked in there with. He had about seven trillion dollars. They call it the stimulus package. Mm-hmm. The, now what he did. The, uh, the government went over to Saudi Arabia with all that oil. They made deals. They made deals with Saudi Arabia. And right now, all of those deals are falling apart because uh, Obama is not don't want to do what Bush had promised to do. And I know this was one major problem. This is how this, this crap works. Almost over 50% of all the countries that are around the world have a government that the people hate especially in the oil com- countries. And we can start out with Saudi Arabia. We can start out again with Iraq, and we definitely can go to uh, that country right below I- Iraq. Kuwait. Iran? Okay. Uh-uh. Kuwait. Okay. Iran told, them, Iran told them don't even come over here because the people put that government in. And that's why he he runs his mouth the way he do. And that's why they went got the Ayatollah that the United States ran out in 1955, ran him out, France took him, and they brought in the Shah of Iran, and they went in and stole all the, all the oil. And then 1980, when, when, when uh, 
uh, what's his name, a peanut man out of Georgia was president. That's mm-hmm. when they kidnapped all them people in the embassy and told them, we ain't going to let these people out till you get rid of the show. And they got rid of the show. They let the people out. And, and the, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini came back and set up the government. And then he appointed the gover- governors and, me- and the prime ministers that's in there now. That's why the United States don't like them. Mm. So but is that why it, well, now uh, Israel is trying to get over in Iran? Oh, boy. That's a whole nother can of worms. Okay, it, okay. It, it, that's another can of worms. Because Iran has a right to have uh, nuclear weapons, but mm-hmm. uh, Israel don't, don't want them to have it. So they're pressuring the United States to make Israel stop. I mean, Iran <clears> stop. <throat> and it's, it's a mess. Mm-hmm. They're putting Obama right on front street. That's mm-hmm. why um, that damn Benjamin Netanyahu, that bastard, come in here, and he's only talking to the Republicans. Right. And, and he just, he's ignoring the president who is in yeah. office, which is yeah. a, a big no, no-no, but the Republicans tell him, damn, Obama, he's an old nigga anyway. Don't worry about it. We're going to do this, and we're going to do that. That's what's going on. It's a mess. Now, let's get back. We don't want to get off this straw, man. Okay. All right. <laughs> Boy, my mind is clicking today. Yeah, it's right. clicking. Woo! Okay, so I got a whole lot of stuff here. I'm running across, and uh, I'm just going to just reach and get it. I ain't going to be fooling around with, with it, trying to run it in order. Y'all just got to work with me. Now, okay. I want I want everybody out there to go and get their personal check that have a checking account. I want you to just sit out while we're talking and, and take out a check. And we're, and we're going to come back to the check in a minute. But right now, I want you to get it, and I'm going to come back to the check. All right. That's important. Now, let's jump over here and deal with uh, – what we got going? That's Social Security, straw man government. All right. Are you free? I know what I what I missed. I missed it. That ain't what I want. Now, the straw man was created when you were born, and they named the straw man through E N S L E G I S Ennis Ligus Ennis Ligus. That's how I pronounce it. I can't call it. And it sounds like you, but it's not you. Now, they can only deal with fictitious entities. Since the government is fictitious, it's just like Casper the Friendly Ghost, he can only talk to ghosts. He can't talk to humans. He can only talk to other ghosts. Now, y'all might laugh or think I'm talking stupid, but this is corporate law. Corporations can only talk to corporations. Now, since they created this thing called United States of America, Inc., which is a corporation, they had to have subjects that were corporation. So they, they reached for uh, and passed the law in 1868 that they had a 14th Amendment that said everybody in the United States are 14th Amendment citizens, which means you're not a constitutional citizen. You are 14th Amendment citizens. And they cannot amend a contract that they had nothing to do with. That's why they tell you any amendment past the 10th is unfounded, unlawful. And there's 26 amendments. And taxes is one of them. That's that's what they made up. And they made it sta- a statue, and you think it's law. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Well, well so the people paying, you're talking about income taxes or taxes just period, any kind of taxes? Taxes, period. Because remember, I told you <laughs> there's no such thing as an Indian. And in their book, there's no such thing as an Indian, but they don't put it where you can find it. They didn't put it in Black Law's Dictionary. They put it in the uh, Barron's Legal Dictionary, B-A-R-R-O-N. 
Now, with Barons, it says the word ended was a fictitious name that they just used because it was convenient with all the treaties they were writing. Now, if that's true, then in the Constitution, original Constitution, it said that Indians are not supposed to pay taxes. So now the question is, who were the Indians? Me and you, Bev. That's why they did that. You and I are the Indians. That's why they, they, don't, they, they made us, they separated us. We were here all the time, but they had to fix it to make us think we were, they did us a favor by bringing us over here. And you got niggas today that believe that. And you got uh, agents that keep spousing that crap, such as Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton. I ain't got to call them. You know what I'm talking about. All them Negro pundits, all them Jack Lake preachers, all of the so-called athletes and all these superstars and super uh, civil rights all-stars. That's all they talk about. When we came over on the ship, we didn't do this. Do no, oh, nigga, get out of here. I don't want to hear it. I was here when the ship came. I'm looking at that punk when he got off the ship. But they're not going to let you know that. They keep bringing up whoa, 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 the Indian who was an idiot who was scalping people. And y'all believe that. And they was the one doing the scalping, from my yes. knowledge. Yes, yes. Their war uh, crimes are above and beyond humanity, what they've done. Not only then, now, what they did in, look what they're doing over there today. Obama's bombing people from a non-manned airplane called a drone, and he's blowing up villages and killing babies. If that's not inhuman, what the hell is going on? You see what I'm saying? And and then they make you be so angry because they put on the news somebody's head getting chopped off, and everybody say, oh, we got to kill all the Arabs. Oh, come on, come on. You open up the door, there's an Arab standing right there. Get your gas, there's an Arab right there. How come he ain't chopping off your head? Or how come you ain't jumping on him? They do what they have to do to keep you in bondage. And the way, one of the main ingredients to keep you in bondage is keep fear. They create fear. And you fall for it every damn time. Okay? Now, I'm looking for, I've got my book right here, but I'm looking for Meet Your Straw Man. And I got it. Uh, let me see where I'm at. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like I didn't do it. Okay, but I do have it. Okay. So when we come back from the break, you'll find it. Uh, Yep, I'll find it. Now, do you think everybody, do you have your check? Do you have a check, uh, Beth? Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's deal with the check going into the break. All right. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at the top left of the check. Your name or your corporation should be there along with your address, your city and state, and your zip code. Right. All of it's in all capital letters. Yeah. All right. Now, look at the lower right-hand side of the check. There is a bold print piece of uh, a, a couple of letters that is hard to see. But it's called, it's MP. If you look real close, it's called, it's MP. And that means microprint. Mm-hmm. Now, this this check belongs to your straw man. But it can't come alive until you put energy into the check and give the straw man present, p- permission to tell the bank to take your take that money out of there and give it to whatever you want to do. And you don't know it, but if you look at that MP, if you had a microscope, it's it's sixty I saw it in right, MP. It's sixty times smaller than the regular print. But it says that that line that goes into the MP, it says authorized 
signature. Right. I hope everybody, let me look, go to the uh, my uh, uh, chat room and see if they're doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody doing it? I, I don't see it. But it says it means authorized signature. So when you sign it, you give that piece of paper energy so that that straw man, that fictitious in, entity in all caps, which is not you, because you spell your name upper and lower caps, but they coming from your mama, the Cisco account, the the uh, wait uh, waiting room, the uh, uh, recovery room, and the Wall Street, and the Social Security number that that titles your account. That's your account number. The Social Security is your account number to your monies that are created in the straw man's name. That's where the so-called 85 million to 105, 95 million, 105, that's where that comes from. Because they flipped the, the, the instrument for 18 years and they, and they sell it for profit. And they come if they sell it and it comes back, sell it and it comes back, and it comes it, it goes out as a negotiable instrument, and it comes back as a grant or a bond or interest paid on the negotiable instrument, and Wait all of that is done. It goes out as a negotiable instrument, and it comes back as a bond. Yes, and, it goes and they back keep it your, going. Yes, Go ahead. they keep flipping it. They keep flipping it. Okay. And every time it goes out, it has a tag of interest rate, and when it comes back, the interest comes back with it. And that's mm-hmm. how your account grows. That's how that straw man account grows. Now, everybody has a notion. The old uh, uh, Moore's peachy, and I'm going to call it old because I've, I've, I've risen above all the old teaching. I keep telling people, I'm not into that anymore. They want to uh, 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 cancel the straw man. I said, you don't want to do that. And I ain't going to argue with you about it because you don't know what you're doing. Don't don't cancel it. Because if you cancel it, two things is going to happen. Number one, you're going to cut yourself off of, of the millions that is already in your account. And number two, you cannot do business in the United States unless you do it as a straw man because the government is fictitious. So why would you want to create a new straw man? I know some black folks in Detroit when when the, the Moors come in here with all this bull crap, and I'll call them dirty Moors, but I don't like to do that because I don't want to start an argument. Let's just say Moors that did not have all of the information. They came in and told these black these other Moors, y'all can come down to Carolina. We're going to give you a trust. We're going to give you a new name. We're going to give you a, a new Social Security. We're going to do everything. It costs from 500 to $2,000. I don't know what they paid. They went down. They came back with all the paperwork. Oh, it was pretty. Had ribbons on it. It had uh, logos. Oh, it was ready to go. The first thing this one brother did, I said, man, do you, do you really know what you know? He said, yeah, I'm going to the bank tomorrow and open up my account. I said, well, what's your spiritual name? He said, uh, I'll just say Casa Boo Boo for conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, you're going to go down there and open up an account in Casa Boo Boo? He said, yeah. I said, do you realize that when they send you the information back of the bank statement, of what is paid into the checking account or whatever you're going to set up. Do you know it's going to be in all capital letters? That brother looked at me. He said, no, I'm, it's all it's in upper and lower caps. I said, no, it ain't. They cannot deal with you in upper and lower caps. The only way they can deal with you is in all caps. And most of those corporations, computers and typewriters, they got computers now, they only print in all caps. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, they why can. not? Because that's the only way they can communicate. It makes sense. Yes. The only way they can communicate is through all caps. 
Now, I'm going to click this at you real quick. A traffic ticket. And we can come back to this after uh, the break, but I'm going to run this on you real quick. After you accept something like a traffic ticket, you accept it for value and explain to the judge that you are the secured party and ask if the judge or anyone has a claim against you. They will always say no. Nobody in the, who in that courtroom could have a claim against you. Now, the, the, the police officer cannot have a claim because he's the one that gave you the ticket. So he said you was doing 40. Well, I say I wasn't doing 40. Now, that puts you out of it because you are a complaining witness. So now we got the judge and the prosecutor and the jury left. So the, any of y'all got a complaint. Did y'all see this incident? No. Why would you even be in front of a judge? The ticket vanishes when you accept it for value. You took it away from the court. It's now yours. The court is your living room. They have no jurisdiction to hear the case because there's no complaint. Nobody has a claim. Are you getting that bib? I hear your brain clicking a little bit. <laughs> I'm grasping it. You better, <laughs> you better put a little grease. Put a little grease on. I heard it. Crank it up. You're right. You're you re- right. <laughs> you return the presentment to them for settlement and closure. So you're going to send the ticket in and say, "I do not mm-hmm. agree. <laughs> I do not agree to contract with you because." The uh, uh, trade and uh, whew, the lending act says you can cancel any contract in 72 hours. Ladies know that because lady will buy a brand new formal eighty thousand dollar formal on Friday, wear it to a dance on Saturday, and take it back on Monday, and they have to take it back because you 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 say I I don't want to wear it, I don't like it. My husband didn't like it, so take it back. But you had a chance to wear it Saturday night. And they have to take it because of the, uh, whew, fair, uh, whew, I keep wanting to call it uh, Lending Act. The, uh, it'll come to me in a minute. But there's a there's a federal act. What's that federal act called? Well, Trade Lending Act. Yep. Yep. Yep, the Federal Trade and Lending Act. They, can, they cannot. It's called Regulation Z. Y'all can look that up. Regulation Z in the fair of uh, trade. God dog it. Leave it alone. I'll come back and tell you after break when I get to it. But anyway, you can cancel it. This also applies because you, you signed and pre, you signed uh, the presentment at the roadside. Now we don't sign tickets now like they used to. But you signed it without prejudice, which takes away. So you can put without prejudice on the ticket in red ink when you cancel it and accept it for value and mail it in. But you got to mail it certified mail because they'll swear they didn't get it. Okay. And reserve your right. So now you are... uh, the, the straw man, you're still dealing with the straw man because mm-hmm. the ticket is going to be in all capital letters. But we jumped to, we skipped to uh, 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 accept for value. We jumped to that. Mm-hmm. So well, before you go on the break, Ron, uh, we have a caller. You want to take the call right quick? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Area code 248. <laughs> Eight two five. Oh, I think it's one. Two four eight eight two five. Okay, okay, Ryan. They must have hit the the one button by mistake. Go ahead. By mistake. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to get when we come back. I'm going to take you on a a little test when we talk about the White House. Who meets in the White House? What do they do there? And do they help you in any way coming from Washington, D.C.? Okay. Now, we got one more call, Ryan. Let's take this right, before we go. 
Yes, Bev. Hey, Ron. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Great. How are you? I'm doing yep, great. I can Thank hear you. you. Yes, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go um, ahead. I've been listening. I have a quick question. How does this information yes. apply to um, non-citizens? Like, if you were not born in this country, but you're here as a, quote-unquote, legal resident, green card, so forth? Well... First of all, I'm going to tell you, be very careful with the green card because if they don't like you and think you are trying to uh, be a smart aleck, they will cancel your green card. I know that to be a fact. And you have to renew that green card every year. Am I correct? Um, Hello? Well, actually, that that is correct in a sense, the, depending on which one you have. Some are okay. do not does not have a um, they do not have a expiration date on it. But if you travel okay. with one that does not have an expiration date, they can clip it and force you to renew it when you come back. And I know this because that's what happened with me. Wow. Well, I know some Arabs here in Detroit that every year when they were supposed to, or whenever they were supposed to renew it. They had a date. So let's say December 31st, you must renew your card. So they would send it in December 1st so they wouldn't miss the deadline and it would not expire. Well, the government had a, a way, especially in Detroit with all the Arabs, never let it go to the expiration, always let it go beyond the expiration date. So they wouldn't get a new card until around February or March only so they could keep them in line to let them know if we can find you doing anything we don't want, you won't get your card. So I would tell you, and I want you to hear me clear, I would say to you to be very, 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 very careful in what you do. Now, I know you have a driver's I don't know yet, but you should have a driver's license. You ought to have or you may have a credit card. All of that's in all caps. Now, the question is, does the credit card people know you are a green card person? When you fell out the application, did you say, I was a, I'm an alien or a non-citizen? If they don't know that, you can do whatever you want to do with them. But when you're fooling with the government, like taxes or that other stuff, I advise you to be very, very careful. And if you don't know what you're doing, stop it. And I'm right. not an okay. alien or a green card holder, so I don't want to step step out beyond and come up with something crazy. So I would say I'm not there, so I don't want to even work with that. I don't want to even answer you on that question. But whatever you do, be careful. Is that fair right. enough? Yes, absolutely. Do you um, okay? Also, do you um, ascribe to birth certificate authentication procedure that? say, um, are the Moors ascribed to? Yes, and that's what I'm in the process of doing right now. And and my state that I was born in is the most racist state in the Union, which is Indiana. And they're giving me hell right now. They haven't refused me, but they're stalling. They are stalling. Now, people that live in Michigan, they've gotten all theirs back in, in, time, in a timely manner, and they went on and processed it further. Now, where were you born? Were you born what country? Come you don't from Jamaica, you don't want to. Come from, come from Jamaica. Yeah, from Jamaica. Well, you know, I was talking to another lady that has the same problem or situation. It's not a problem. And I don't know how you would deal with it coming, because your birth certificate, I don't know how you would get it authenticated. And if you did, I think England, since you are a part of England, England would be your country that you get it authenticated through, not United States. Now, I don't know, but I'm just thinking, because you come out of Jamaica. Jamaica belongs to uh, uh, England. Am I right? Well, I'm quite sure it still does unofficially in the sense that America 
still belongs to has its connections to Europe. That's to my yeah. understanding. However, um Jamaica supposedly had its in got its independence in the sixties. All right. Well let me tell you what I'll do no for longer, you because other people no longer are, longer All right. Let me tell you what I'm gonna do for you. And I'm gonna do it right now. And because a lot of people are asking me that, and they're coming from other countries, and I don't even want to talk to them because I don't want to get them in trouble, all right? But this Friday at 11 o'clock, write this telephone number down, 424-222-5250. That brother name is Jonah Bay. Jonah has a program from 11 to 2, and he has announced he'll answer all questions that's during 11 that, those hours. That's 11 to 2 11 Eastern. Uh, is, that, is that Eastern yeah. time? Yes, Eastern time, same as Detroit, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Friday. And his name is Jonah Bay. Just call in, 11 o'clock. And it's a radio talk show similar to what we're doing right now. And tell him that Ron March couldn't answer it and told me to come and see the master. <laughs> and right, Jonah indeed. would lay it out for you. All right? Yes, and sir. And there's a couple more people out, out there that has those questions. And call Jonah, but I don't know. And I don't want to get involved because I, I, I don't want to make a mistake and get you in trouble. Y'all be after me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Carla. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, uh, the other callers that we have on the line, stay on the line, and when we come back after our 10-minute break, Ron, uh, we'll answer your, your question. All right. Now, you got a couple of phone calls. Let's get them out of the way right now. Okay, I'm going to go to area code three one four seven six one. Hey, good evening, good evening, Devin. Uh, good. Ron. Yes, good evening. How are you? Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? This is Saya, man. Let me just be real quick and fast, and uh, just drop some bombs, man. That uh, assist you. Uh, you're moving, man. You've been very helpful. Uh, look up what you call the Four Republics. This will give you the information on. The first, real first president with the other presidents at the same time, what you call the Colonial Continental Congress. That was the first republic in the European sector, which was a guy named Peyton Randolph. He was president with George Washington. Check that out. Wow. We have been, wow. We have not been under those four uh, republics. There were several presidents at the same time, as much as even seven presidents at, at one time. Mercy. How and was that possible? possible? You look it up for yourself. How? You have to look up for yourself. Okay. And that's why I'm putting it out. And all the right. popes and the pope, how they did that in 1933, while all that happened. Well, the Vatican went bankrupt. And they got a... Reparation under a treaty called the Lateran Treaty from Mussolini that they was funded. Whoa. It was equivalent to one hundred million dollars, and they bought the stock of nineteen thirty three that outbeat everybody else. That put the Vatican back on its feet. That's when they created. So they created the channel to take those people who was not signed under that current channel contract to get them up under that to keep up the to re. Establish the 14th Amendment in a new contract. Wow. I know what you call a certificate, wow. shadow, birth certificate, a lot. I'm, all right. I'm going to look that up, but I know I got that information, but I haven't researched it. But I'll take a look at that and uh, deal with it. All right? Thank you, Carl. Uh, Thank you for that information. Okay. Yes. Yep. All right. uh, we have another caller, uh, 586604. Hey, Peace, what's going on? Peace, Chaos. Hey, hey. Yes, Chaos, how are you? I'm good. I wanted to, what you got? to um, mm-hmm. give, an, give an answer to that last caller, not the last caller, but the caller before last, 
that asked the question about how to deal with uh, the, uh, being a non-citizen with a green card. Um, if you, he, he can, if, uh, hopefully he's still listening. You can go back into the open forums that Jonah Bay has done. He's dealt with it already. And basically what he has said you need to do is to authenticate the certificate that you get with your green card because the green card citizens are treated just as uh, the same as 14th Amendment citizens as a straw man. So what you would have to do is authenticate um, the document with the, that comes or the cert that comes or the card that comes with the green card. Um, you send that through the authentication oh. pro process that we're already doing with the uh, birth certificates right now. So, And you can actually go back, and I want to say it was last week that he answered that question. I'm not for sure because I'm in transit right now. But um, okay. I'll know for sure in about an hour or two, I'll know for sure what uh, show it was. But, yeah. And I, I would still say okay. definitely I agree with you. He, he needs to call in and ask, but in case he doesn't get on the phone with Jonah, because he gets a lot of calls yeah. during his, during his, right. during his yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. So in case he doesn't get on the phone with them, you have to authenticate um, the uh, certificate that comes with the green card the green. and send it through that process so you can take control of that and you can say this is – I'm the owner of this the same, much the same way as we're doing with the birth certificate. So you, in that matter, or they'll treat you just as they, you know, would treat oh. the, uh, the fictitious all right. entity if, if we were to go in. Yep. So. Okay. That's all okay, I have. Uh, all right. Yep. Thank you. All right. All right. Yep. No Thank problem. You. I, all right. I got a caller, Beth. All right. Okay. Caller, Beth. Okay. Uh, okay. Four one three area uh, code. Right. Four one, three, I got a feedback, Ron. I'm feedback, listening to it. Ron. Where's I'm Wally? Wally. Wally. Yep. Wally. Yep. I'm trying to get him up here. Area code. Area code. Get the feedback. Big one. Get the feedback. Big one. Yep. Chaos might be. Yep. Um, chaos might be. Uh, it might be chaos. Uh, let me disconnect him. I'm going to disconnect him. I'm going to disconnect him. Right. Okay, he's hung up. So. All right. Okay, he's hung up. So. He's gone. He's gone? Yeah. Yep. He's gone? Yep. Yeah. No, we're still getting a feedback. Uh, we're still getting a feedback. And that's complete. That's it's terrible. terrible. It's terrible. How's that, how that possible? How's that how is it possible? Uh, well, maybe what I'll do, uh, what I'll do, Ron, is uh, I'm, I'm going to hang up and call back. I'm going to hang up and call back. Okay. All right. See what happens. Okay. okay. All right. See what happens. See what happens. So okay. everybody that's on the line, just stay on the line, and everyone that's listening, just listening. I'm going to uh, research. I'm going to uh, research.
Okay. All right. Now, I want to run this information. I got all this uh, uh, good information in regards to the straw man and pay and getting out of debt. See, the straw man is the debtor. The straw man is the debtor. Once you realize that, you can become the secured party and dictate to the straw man what he will pay and won't and won't pay. You won't be responsible for the straw man. Under the 14th Amendment and numerous Supreme Court proceedings, as well as inequity, private property cannot be taken or pledged for public use without just compensation. Now, that's so important. And they're taking everybody's property with this foreclosure. But it says you cannot take it or pledge it for public use without just compensation or due process of the law. The United States cannot pledge or risk the property and wealth of its private citizens. That's not the straw man. They can do it with the straw man, but they cannot do it with the private citizen for no. any government purpose without legally providing them remedy to recover what is due them on their risk. Courts have long ruled that to one to have one's property legally held as collateral or security for a debt, even when one still owns it and still has it, is to deprive him of it since it is a, at risk and could be lost for the debt at any time. This is heavy, y'all. This is what you really need to study and research. And y'all better be emailing me, and I can send you this information because I have. Now, where did that case. from? Where, where did you just read from? from? United, United States versus Russell, thirteen Wall W A L L, case six two three and six two seven, six two three and six two seven. It's telling you that. Under the 14th Amendment, they cannot take your property without just compensation. Now, when they come in with a foreclosure, they can't take your property on a foreclosure because uh, they don't give you uh, just compensation. You lose the house. You lose the payments. You lose the promissory note. You lose three times when they come in and take your house, and they never compensate you for that. And it goes on to say, the United States cannot pledge or risk the property and wealth of its private citizens. That's not the straw man. That's Ron March, all ca I mean, upper and lower caps, excuse me, upper and lower caps. For any government purpose, you cannot take Ron March's property for any government purpose without legally providing him remedy to recover what is due him on their risk. See, they come in with foreclosures in order to so when you stop making payments, they claim that you are you have violated or, or, or defaulted on the contract. But now it goes on to say that they're not allowed to even use your property as collateral. Courts have long ruled that to have one's property legally held as collateral or surety for a debt. Even when one still owns it, I still own it and still has it because I'm still in it, is to be, deprive him, me, of it since it is at risk and could be lost for the debt at any time. The United States court, court said that the Constitution provides private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. Now, next paragraph is important. Sureties compelled to pay debt. The upper and lower man, if you don't know that you are a surety, you're only a surety when you, if you don't know that there are two entities involved in Ron March. There's all caps and there's upper and lower caps. I am not responsible for all caps. That's their 
problem, not mine. But if I don't know it, I will automatically become the surety of all caps, and then I'm responsible for paying. Sureties compelled to pay debts for their principal have been deemed entitled to reimbursement. They're supposed to reimburse me, even without a contractual promise. And probable and probably, excuse me, there are few document doctrines better established. There's another court case to establish that. See, when you get this, if you want this document, you need to get it and look up these cases and relate it, them to your particular situation. Now, here comes the one I just read you before you came online, Beth, mm -hmm. and it was called Title 31. I'm going to read it to you. <laughs> United States Code, Title 31, Section 1, I mean, excuse me, 3123 states that the United States government has an obligation to pay dollar for dollar principal and interest in legal tender all debts occurred by the American people. You can't get any clearer than this. You want me to read it again, Beth? Yes, please. The United States Code, USC, Title 31, Section 3123, states that the United States government has an obligation to pay dollar for dollar principal and interest in legal tender all debts occurred by the American people. Since they took our gold in 1933, and, and uh, uh, Senator McFadden filed criminal charges against Roosevelt and all them crooks in the White House, they hurry up and gave a remedy to the New Deal, and the remedy was we will pay the debt of the people. That's why we took the gold. But Ben, we can't get no clearer than that. And so, that is how, what we've done. and so you're saying how you get them to pay your debt is through the, um, the uh, what is that? What you the put on the set for value? The set for value? That, is that how that's you get one them? Way, that, that, that's one way to make them pay. Mm -hmm. There are 13. I, I keep saying 13. I didn't count them. Maybe it's not 13. I know it's 13 or more. There are 13 different negotiable instruments that you can use, Beverly D., to pay off your debt. Now, of these 13, I'll give you four that will blow your mind. Number one is cash. That's a negotiable instrument. It's a debt note. Check. I just showed you the check because you have to authorize the, the, the straw man to tell the bank to take the money out or to pay the debt. Or money order. That's three, and then ex except for value is four. There are at least eight more or more, eight or nine more. And they're all listed. If you look up negotiable instruments, you can, you can, you can see it, and it will tell you where they are, it, they may be here in this in this document. This is a hell of a document, and I'll go up to the top. Except right here, here's another one. If the instrument is accepted, now I'm. Oh yeah, I can give you another bed that you that you <laughs> that you should know about being a female, because that's what all y'all do is collect coupons. Okay. You may not do it personally, but you right. Yes. A coupon is a negotiable instrument. Think about it. In the paper, it's sitting there looking at you. If you come in and pay $1 for, I mean, no, pay $3 for a big can of Tide, box of Tide, we'll give you another one free. That's a negotiable instrument. Now, the list, whoop, I used to have the list. I don't have it at hand. But I got the list, and the list will give you all of the negotiable instruments that you can use, and you can pay your bill with it. Now, the, here's a problem. 
that people don't understand. I had a guy the other night call me and was driving me bonkers because mm-hmm. I tried to help him. And everything I told him, he called back in five minutes and tell me that they said go to hell or all that kind of crazy talk. Now, what he was doing, he was arguing with them. He was creating controversy. That's what they are. That's what they do. And once you create controversy, you automatically lose. Now, if you send a negotiable instrument that I I, I give you this this document, you see it. You give it to them. You send it in correctly. Negotiable instrument. As far as you are concerned, Bev, the debt is paid. Don't call me and tell me that somebody called you from the mortgage company or from the uh, uh, whatever credit card people and said it ain't paid. What the hell are you calling me for? Well, you told me it was going to be paid. It is paid. You're the idiot to even take the phone call from that nut. I said, who was it that called? Oh, it was a a, 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 a Visa. I didn't ask you that. Who was on the line? Did Visa talk to you? No. Who in the hell was talking to you? Oh, oh. Uh, They said they were secretary. Oh, Lord. I'm talking to an idiot. I want to know who was the person that called you and what rank did they have? Oh, 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 I don't know. Well, they could have been the janitor. You ever thought about that? It could have been your daughter making $8 an hour just to take calls from idiots like you and just tell them it ain't paid and hang up. Now you're going bonkers, coming back challenging me, and I told you, and the papers told you, and the court case told you, and the uh, the HCR 192 told you that once you send it in, they have to accept it. So why in the hell are you calling me? This is what drives me bonkers, uh, Beverly. It drives me crazy that people are not doing their research. Well, you know, they've been been, uh, up under fear so long, uh, they got to work their way out of that fear. I'm not going to accept their drama, (laughs) babe. I got too much to do. The hell with them. Stop calling me. I mean that. Stop calling me. Because if you read it, it tells you what can and cannot happen. It ain't me to say it. It's right here in front of you. And and everything I've told you, I can back it up right here in it. And even this one that I got, I'll send this to you free. It tells you how to set up and accept for value, pay off your bills, how to do a money order. They do all these things. Now, now, they do, to, well, they, now, it, now do you send that to... The third party person, or you send it directly to the people who you owe the money to? You send it to the people you owe the money to. Because if you send it to the third party, I don't know who would be the third party. You tell me. The, who collect, the debt collectors, uh, you know how they send the law. Oh, office. you can send it. Oh, okay. If it's, if they've already sent it to the debt collector, you can send uh-huh. it to the debt collector if you want to. It don't matter. Uh-huh. But the bottom line is you got the green card that somebody accepted that dollar or that uh, a dollar for dollar negotiable note that you sent. Somebody accepted it. That's all you need. And be prepared to go to court and tell the judge, I paid in full. Why am I down here? Now, if somebody say we don't accept it, now you can bring charges against it. You say, what did you say? Well, we don't accept that. Oh, so you work for Sears and Roebuck, and you're telling me in court, in front of a, the judge, that you're not going to accept my accept for value or my negotiable instrument. That's right. We ain't going to accept it. Good enough. That's all I want to hear. So do to me whatever you want to do, judge. When I get through suing Sears and this idiot, I'll own the courthouse and Sears and Roebuck. Now, the judge going to have to stop that punk and say, wait a minute, you better go call the office and see if they want you to say these type of things down here in court because you're under oath, Mr. March is under oath, and he's asking you these questions and you telling him all this crazy stuff. Judge knows better. 
The judge may stop him and say, don't know, we ain't going there today, that type of thing. But no, out of your ignorance, you're going to say, well, Ron Mars said it's supposed to work. And I'm not getting caught up in that trash. So stop calling me. If I give you information or someone give you information, try it. You can't lose because you owe anyway. So how can you lose? So if it don't work, do it again. Modify it. What difference does it make? Modify it. Because for a long time, we were doing it, and it, it wasn't working, and we found out that we had to put on the negotiable instruments paid to the order of United States Treasury. We failed to do it because they didn't give us that information. Now, why would you want to keep calling people back? If you don't want to do it, pay the bill. Don't call me. Pay it. Go pay your bill. Most people are trying to get out of something. Now, that's another thing that we need to talk about. You don't do this in order to be a super millionaire and or get out of child support or get out of uh, a, a legitimate debt you owe. If you don't have the money is when you want to do these things and you got to live every day. Now, a uh, 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 telephone bill, an insurance bill, a cable bill, those are not debts. You need to learn much more. I know people that are writing these off, but you need to learn much more on how to do it because this is not a debt because they will turn your crap off if you don't pay. I had a lady got my package and come taught me, well, they keep calling me to pay. Who? Oh, my, my insurance company. They said they're going to cut me off. I almost fainted. I said, I thought you understood what to do. I said, I'm going to send you your money back and never, ever call me again. It's just over with. I learned my lesson, and I know she learned hers. Stay away from me. Don't call. Don't even listen to my program. You're the biggest idiot in the world, so I'll leave it alone. You see what I'm saying? And, when you do what I do, Bev, you get hung up in this kind of stuff. You get angry. I know I get upset, but it's, you, you can't imagine how people do things without even thinking, you know? And then they call you as if you're, gonna, you're supposed to give them the answer. I said, well, I can't give you the answer. This guy was trying to get a $50,000 SUV that he didn't pay for. He put 30, When he told me he put 13000 cash, no, seventeen, seventeen thousand dollars cash down on the car. I knew I was talking to an idiot. Ooh. Seventeen thousand cash. Seventeen thousand cash, and he paid close to nine thousand in payments. And they said they coming to take it because he still owed. It was a fifty thousand dollar car, so if you add it up, he still owed six, seven, eight thousand dollars. I don't know. And he, they, and they hadn't said anything to him about it because they knew they had, had had got their money back triple. He wanted them to send him the title to the to the vehicle because he wanted to trade it in and get another one. I said, brother, you talking to the wrong person here. I said, I, I don't even want to talk to you no more about that. That sounds like a scam to me that you try to pull on them. You can't afford that kind of stuff. I know it from what you're telling me. But it ain't for me to say that, but I'm telling you that. Why don't you go buy an airplane since you think everything ain't going to work? Get a, go get a Learjet or a helicopter if you think this, this is a game. See, this is a problem we have with our people. They think it's a game. Oh, shoot, when I get that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy me a 1,000 houses. Oh, brother, please. No, you're not. Because your credit is going to stop you. See, people don't realize it, that the credit will stop you because you don't have an income to warrant a $50,000 car. That's why they made him put 17000 down to lower the price of the vehicle. Yeah. And now they're going to take it because he, they knew they was going to get it because yeah. he can't keep it up. Help me, somebody. Okay. Now, is there any question so far about the straw man? The straw man is a fictitious entity. 
It has no 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 hands, no feet, no mouth, no lungs. It don't exist only on paper. They tricked your mother, they tricked you, and they taught you that outside of what the teacher did, now the teacher whooped your knuckles when you was in the first grade and told you to go to Blackboard and write your name. You kept using them great big old letters. And she said, didn't I tell you that the rest of them is little? You keep forgetting. They cracked their now, knuckles. Now, why why do we have two um birth certificate because one you say is in the cat and then the other one is in upper and lower case. Okay. That's simple. The one in upper and lower case is your real uh, uh, a record of birth. That's the so, one that you want to capture. Okay. The other one is the birth of of the straw man. That's why you have two dates on the county birth certificate. There's two dates. One when you were born and the other when they created the straw man. The straw man has to have a date of birth too, doesn't it? Or, or you don't think so? Well, the straw you man have it should look just like the same certificate that's handwritten. It should have the same information on it. It is, but it's, number one, it's in all caps, and number two, it's got two dates. You keep, I keep saying that and act like you can't hear me. The, the one from the county has got two dates on it, two birth dates. Right. I understand that. Up. But I'm all trying right. to figure right. out. I know they use a lot of trickery. I'm trying to find yes. out is, is, since they they keep sending you well from well my experiences they keep sending me the upper and lower caps, and so I mean is 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 they saying that they can control that upper and lower person too since they got you on file? They. There's no law that says they can control the... You have a right to get your birth certificate. I'll, I'll say it that way. You definitely have a right to get your birth certificate. But very few people know there are two birth certificates. Okay. So when you fill out that application, I don't know where you went to fill it out. You filled it out and asked them to send you the health birth certificate. Now, I don't know where you went. You don't have to explain it to me. Mm -hmm. But you did it. Whatever you did, you was in the wrong area when you ordered it. Okay. That's all gotcha. I can tell you. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now, I, I told you to go to uh, another person to tell you. Now, what he did, if he talked to you, whatever he did, you did not do. All I right. guarantee you that. Okay. Okay. And they will make that difficult if you don't know what you're doing. Because I'm trying to tell you that the state loses money if you become a natural person. And they do not want you to destroy this old good old United States, uh, US of A, Inc., these racist pigs, white supremacists. They do not want you to destroy that. Even and if you're over 18? Even if you're over 18, because okay. you're a black nigga. They don't want, you ain't got a right to be free. And if they don't have you as a slave, who's going to take your place? Because the government still wants their money. The, the bankers want their money. So if all black people, and I'm going to give you a scenario, get their birth certificates and do it right and get out of the system, I guarantee you that them white folks will be put pressure on to keep up the payments. And I, the payments of the debt. Keep paying the debt off. But more than likely, as we begin to wake up and free ourselves, the government is going to collapse because they can't get the money that they usually get. They're going to take your negotiable instruments out of the system so it can't flip anymore so that they can make money off of you. Gotcha. Now, 
a lot of people don't understand how they make money off the off of the quote unquote birth certificate and or the straw man. It's easy. What they do or what they did, they put a million dollar note, which is only phony money, on your uh, application of birth and made it be worth a million dollars. Then they put it on the stock market and 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 made it a negotiable instrument on the stock market and placed it in as preferred stock. You can't buy it. You can only use it. So General Motors comes in, these big corporations, they need money or they need yeah, they need money to build so they have uh, I always get mixed up when I do this. I'm going to try to do it simple. They got $500,000. They want to build a million-dollar uh, uh, complex. They are $500,000 short. So they go to the bank. They got good credit. The bank says, I do not have uh, uh, cash, but I have Ron March and Beverly T's birth certificate. And both of them are worth $2 million. So now the question is, how much would you sell those $2 million of, of, of certificates to me for? They always go at a discount. Stock is always at a discount. So they say to General Motors, I'll give that to you for a million, uh, well, let's go, you know, $200,000. So now General Motors have $5,000 cash. Two million dollars in bond, and they're going to be out of two hundred thousand dollars because they had to buy these bonds. So when they put it together, they can build a complex, do all that they're supposed to do, and then they'll start making payments to pay it back. So let's say it was 